I'm set up on the honing station. First, let's look at a couple of the tools necessary to do this. And one tool is the high dollar one, which I'm sure you probably figured out. This is the Sun NP190 Valve Guide Honing Set. If you're going to do this work right, this, you, I, I, I can't believe some shops that I've seen they ain't even got it. Fits on your drill. Now most of the time they want a speed reducer on here, but my, my Milwaukee's got a really good speed control with just years of doing it, I've figured it out. How to get it the right speed. Now, this is a four digit decimal place, Mick Toy U Mike. This is my measurement tool. Now, I know I'm going to hear some flack on this, and that's fine. Yeah, I would love to have the valve guide dial bore gauge. It's the neatest thing. I wanted one. Uh, they're right at $1,000 now for one of them. Uh, the, all the shops I worked at through the years out in California had one, and I developed a relationship using this measuring the valve stem putting that measurement here in this and then coming over here and hitting the guide now there's nothing in the world wrong with these if you've had a working relationship between that guide home and one of these this is the difference when i get through with it i know that by the feel that i use and the measurement of this ball that I'm going to get 0 .0002 difference from this measurement to this and it is consistent as hell so is it a dial board? No but because I'm using this gauge the small bore set measuring the valve and through years of practice and having the guy at home there with me I have developed a damn near perfect relationship to where I've got it to where the variance from this tool to that dial bore .0002. There's people that can't hone a damn cylinder on a bore on a block to that measurement or hone it. So is it worth a thousand dollars? I'd love to have it. Am I going to pay it right now? No, because I'm trying to get the flow bench in here, my SF600 in the next few months. That's when I'm going to get to show you a lot of fun. I'm going to teach you all about the flow bench. We're going to actually take part of the flow bench apart. I'm going to show you how it works, give you understanding. That's all coming. But uh, tools like that that I can count on and I know the measurement I'm not going to surpass. So let's see how I do it. First thing I'm going to do, let me reposition your camera to give you a closer view. Okay, let's go by the book here. This is your four point or four decimal point thing. The first thing we got to do is zero it. The temperature in here right now is around 60 degrees. I always keep this piece of paper here so that I can, you know, run a little bit between the, um, the two pickup points. Tighten it a little bit, give me a little pull. That gets the oxidation off of it. Okay. Now, let me get this position right so you can see me good. Okay. Now I'm going to take, pull it down. Okay, I got zero, 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 then a zero line straight across. So I know I'm set to zero. Now, I'm going to go ahead and open it up to around 343. Alright, now I checked this valve out earlier already and um, bottom and mid are okay, but now I notice at the top it's a little loose. I'm not saying this is a china valve, but I'm going to say it is. <laughs> uh, Bob, I don't know if he bought these valves or whether the machinist uh, did it for him, but these valves, see, I can feel just a little bit of taper, probably a few tenths. Like right here, I got a little bit of a pull in the middle, a little bit looser, and up the top. Look at that. 
I could just push it right through really without any kind of problem. So it's not bad. I'm not saying they're bad valves. They might even be a higher quality. It's just it's unusual that little bit of taper difference there. But anyway, we're going to go ahead, set the measurement. I'm going to go off the center. All right, and the number I come up with is, let's check her one more time. Three forty one. I'm looking at the top. See my lines right here. What they show is the uh, fourth digit decimal place. Looks like five. Three forty one five. No, you know what? That feels just a touch tight. See, you can sit here and play with this. If I didn't have the camera, I could get it done quicker, but... three forty one five. it is. Okay, now, here's the tricky part. You set our uh, gauge right there to the side, and let's do some math. Now, we take 0.3415, we're going to add 0.0012, that's the clearance I run on my intakes, equals 342.7. So then I take the mic, okay, 342, and now I'm going to roll it up here to get the line marked up on the number 7. Boom, there it is. This measurement right here has got the 1001-2000's clearance indicated, 342.7. Now, here's where the tricky part is. Now, usually I have a, um, a bench vise, but I can do it this way. Now, see, it won't pass. So I got to loosen this. You just got to play with it. This is a feel thing that you're going to have to learn your feel with. Got it. There, see that right there? That's my feel. That's Tony's feel. Now, watch what happens when I take this now and try to put it in the valve guide. Let's back up. Boom. Okay, hey, now, boo, it won't even fit in there. But if I take the valve, guess what? See, look at that. It'll hardly fit in there. Just, it can barely go through. That probably was a little burr. See, now, see, look at there. It's got a tight spot right in the center toward the end. So... I go back and forth between the two. This is my feel. This is the measurement. I got some tie spots. So now that I know that, I'm going to set the valve over here to the side and that to the side. This bottle is full. Back up. Bottle is full of WD-40. Um, I'm fixing to buy another barrel of solvent. That stuff's went up to $400 a barrel now. But right now I'm just using WD and I keep it to the side. I'm going to go in here. And I'm going to give it a little bit of a tighten because all I'm going to do is make a pass first. Okay. Just barely right there at the edge. So what you have to do on this deal, you just can't hit it that way. You got to treat it like a, 
a line hone on the block, which what you do then is turn it around. Hit it from this side. Okay. Now here's our hole. Right there. So I shoot me just a touch in. Now I'm going to come here and hit this side. Put a little bit more pressure on it than what I had from the other side. Because remember, that was the area that had the high side. Just a touch. All right, now. Okay. Now, let's zoom in a little bit. Yeah, you got it. Just try checking my viewfinder. Now, that's it right there. I have no hang-ups, no high spots. Man, that feels, that's, that's Tony's feel right there. Now, let's verify. Look at that. You got to have that bounce. When you know you got the clearance right, and I mean, you can feel some resistance, but when you do it, you want to have a little bit of a bounce. That, man, that is absolutely perfect valve stem clearance at .0012. All right, so the trick is, you get your small bore set and you have to have a four digit decimal place micrometer. Let's back up a little bit. With the four digit decimal place micrometer, small hole gauge and your valve stem and a hand hone, you can nail these to deadly precision. Now, let's talk about something real quick. I'm going to go ahead and hone all this. The honing of the guides is over for what I'm going to show. But I wanted to emphasize something. Okay. I was told this one time in a conversation in SEMA. I was at the SEMA so I actually won the SEMA scholarship in, in 1990 and 91 and 95, I believe. Uh, I had the honor of meeting Joe Mondello, and in another situation, I met his son. And his son, Bernard Mondello, uh, it was quite an honor. You know, here I was starting out in the business, and here's a master. So, uh, you know, of course, I tried to pick his brain from everything. And somehow at the table, the subject come out on valve jobs, and he said, you know, he said, most people just don't get it. The valve guide clearance and straightness of the guide has everything to do with the valve job. It's the most important thing there is. He, he went on to tell me that sometimes he can get into a three to four hour honing session on guides. Uh, I didn't understand where he was coming from. That was in my first years when I was really absorbing the knowledge. I was still in college working at SMS. Boy, did I get it. It, he is absolutely correct. The most important thing is the valve guide. When you take a set of heads off to have the valve job done, if that clearance isn't really tight and have a tight feel to it, don't do the valve job because it ain't going to last. It's worthless. The, the mechanics of the head dictate that that valve stem to guide clearance. If you haven't got that where it's supposed to be, the valve job ain't going to last because the valve is moving in there it's going to form the seat. So remember, valve guide first. If somebody says they need a valve job, no, you say you need the heads reworked, you need valve guides and the valve job. Thing is, not many people do what you just saw me do. They use a broke, send it on their way. And what they do, they set them up loose. Why? That way they ain't got to worry about them seizing. They know if they set it up loose, put some oil, they're not going to buy it. Good for the machinist, bad for you, because five to 10,000 miles down the road, you're going to be smoking. They're not going to take the time unless you pay them. A, a guide job like this, current prices on it to hand fit it, hand hone it, measurement, and do what I did, I think they get around anywhere from $250 to $300 to do the guides. Um, I'm really making myself look stupid here when I think of what I charged him for the heads. But anyway, uh, that's that's really it. Um, 
and, and like I said, it takes a while of honing. Some of them go easy, some of them go not. But the straightness of the guide is everything. Keep that in your little notebook. Valve guides first, then valve job. All right, I'm going to go ahead, finish honing all these, get this done, and then we're going to do the valve job, all right, and conclude it to where we do our final finishing touches. Okay.